This is MJ. I'm an author. I'm an artist. I'm an analyzer. You can find all my work at mjmunios.com. Welcome to Red Panda Report 2, the special, the second special, special number two, I guess is what I mean to say. Uh, in this episode of The Shadow that I'll be covering, which is uh, Shadow Episode 3, I believe, it's called The Temple Bells of Nibon, The Shadow battles a drug-pushing, uh, kidnapping, yeah, uh, lady from India, the Indian subcontinent, I believe is the correct way to say it. Uh, it turns out that this young woman was a the niece of a yogi who... Huh, I wonder if that means she was a slave. Huh. Anyway, she was the niece of a yogi who trained in part, or who was part of the training of Lamont Cranston, which led him to become the Shadow. So, I'm going to start off with something, uh, with things that were less than thrilling. I think the episode works, and the episode has a flow to it, but somewhere in the middle, uh, I've listened to this two or three times recently, and somewhere in the middle it just kind of loses the plot for me, and I kind of slip from being able to concentrate on it. Um, there's no immediate threat. I mean, the shadow is in threat of being exposed, but it's very unclear, and the stakes feel low, even though his life is in peril. Perhaps because I know that the shadow's life is always in peril, and the way his life is in peril this time is that if he lets himself stay within a certain area at a certain time and place, or yeah, if he stays in a certain place for a certain amount of time, his ability to become the shadow or to be invisible will be undone for a few moments or for some undetermined amount of time during which he can be shot and killed. The shadow could be shot and killed at any time within a certain room or, you know, at any time within a certain time or place. For example, if you had a circle of guys with machine guns, uh, let's say eight of them, and four of them were aiming, uh, two were aiming high, two were aiming low, two were aiming in the middle, and two were uh, aiming up and down, let's say, and you knew the shadow was going to be in that room with those eight guys, the shadow on the radio drama, at least, would easily be killed I think, by those guys all firing simultaneously and covering as much of the room as they could so that he uh, would be stricken by bullets and die by bleeding to death. Now, that's a ridiculous scenario, but it would also be kind of exciting for the Shadow to go through that scenario and somehow escape from it. The drama and the tension in this one was a lady in a room with a snake and a guy with a gun on a boat, I guess, they're in a room on a boat, uh, is going to undo his powers. And if the intention was for his own, his powers to be undone forever and for him to no longer to become, be able to become the shadow, becoming invisible, that would make sense. And if they had explained that to me, I would have appreciated the danger he was in more. However, the amount of pushback or defiance he gave to this plan was very little. He swapped out a snake in a basket and hoped or guessed <laughs> that the lady would in time Sada Belader, Sa Sadi Belader, um, which I don't know if that's supposed to be like Bell Adder, like beautiful snake. Um, and I don't know if that's supposed to be a real name or if it's supposed to just be something exotic sounding, like maybe Saudi is an actual, uh, uh, not Punjabi, like Hindu name, and the Bell Otter, or Balada, because that's what they say, Saudi Balada. Um, yeah, I, I can't quite tell if that's a stage name or what that is, but anyway, it just, she doesn't seem like she's enough of, of a threat, and then the way that he handles her makes it feel makes it seem like he doesn't feel she's much of a threat either, in which case, why am I listening to this? Why am I interested and excited? I don't know. 
The reason I selected this episode was because I thought it had an interesting premise that there was somebody from the Shadow's past, from Lamont's past, who could undo his shadow ability. But upon further listening, uh, it's not so great. Excuse <laughs> me. Ah. Wow. So, I mean, I'm, I'm even uh, falling asleep talking about it. That's not good. So, I don't know. It's interesting. But um, I never said the shadow was perfect. I just said it was interesting and cool. Uh, so, there has to be lows, and I think this is one of them. Uh, so, but yeah, that's my main gripe with the episode. Um, for some of the positive stuff, uh, we get to see resourcefulness of Lamont Granson slash The Shadow. He's going out with Margot Lane to some event, and she's going to be... Oh, he's taking her dancing, or t- he's dancing, taking her to go see this Indian dancer who he already believes is part of this drug... Uh, crisis that is hitting New York or the city, whatever. And uh, Margot is involved with having that problem addressed and she's part of some social activist club or uh, I don't know what they're doing, petitioning for laws or, or something. Anyway, but she's involved in the case and his network and his information is so extensive and so uh, robust that he already knows what she is working on what she's concerned about. He's concerned about it, and he's already traced down the uh, likely uh, attack vector to handle this issue, which is going to Saudi Bellwater because she's part of it. So, uh, that's interesting. I like that. Something in the lore to talk about is the fact that uh, Lamont Cranston once again tells Margot that the Yogi's uh, practice and ability that he learned from uh, is a type of science and that it isn't something wholly mystical, but then again, you know, are the temple bells mystical as well? I'm not sure. I don't know if there's supposed to be some sort of scam or sham or fake, but he seemed to be afraid of them. Um, and he seemed to treat them as a legitimate threat, but then again, he was able to reproduce them in his office with, or in his, you know, study or library with Margot. So I don't, I just don't understand what that was about, but I'm supposed to be just talking about the lore. Um, yeah, but the lore is a little vague and, and quite undetermined, which I believe allows for maximum flexibility as a creative, as a writer. So I appreciate, you know, why you'd want to do that, but um, it is a little strange that we didn't get much more. Um, I guess a more concrete piece of lore would be that Lamont went around to different places showing his face and I suppose revealing his identity to people and that means there's probably a dozen or or less people on earth who were involved with Lamont in his training who could pinpoint or who could put the finger on him for being the shadow because they recognize that he uses some of their techniques or some of the things that they taught him and I do, I do find that to be interesting. Just on a nerdy level. Nothing really uh, exciting about it unto itself, but it's just kind of a fun factoid, a fun did you know kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah, uh, like I said, I didn't think this was the greatest episode. Um, there were some interesting concepts in it, but overall, some of it fell flat for me or just wasn't, uh, wasn't quite as exciting as it could have been. And I think that's too bad. But tune in for the next episode where I'll be talking about another episode of The Shadow on the third Red Panda Report special before we get into the Red Panda adventures uh, proper. So anyway, uh, until next time, folks, goodbye and good night. I hope you enjoyed that. Go to mjmunoz.com to leave any questions, comments, or other feedback you might have. There you can find all of my analysis, art, and fiction. I cover books, tokusatsu, comic books, anime, and more. Look around. You're sure to find something else that you'll enjoy as well. This has been a Story Over Everything production.